And now in Ghana, the Bank of Ghana has announced three key developments aimed at boosting Ghana's economy and investment landscape. First, the launch of the Ghana Gold Coin under the Gold Purchase Program to so offer Ghanaians new investment opportunities with coins available in various ounces to cater to different investor needs. And the second, of course, is the Bank of Ghana's Monetary Policy Committee, which reduced the policy rate from 29% to 27%, citing a favorable economic outlook and a sharp decline in inflation. And lastly, Ghana's gross international reserves increased significantly, fueled by strong gold export, as the trade surplus rose to $2.78 billion in the first eight months of 2020. Driven by gold and crude oil exports, despite a decline in cocoa exports. Isaac AJ, analyst, SBM Intelligence, joins me for more on this. Hello, Isaac. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, good morning. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. We have three interesting stories coming out from Ghana. I mean, I don't even know which one to start with, but tell me, which of these stories excites you the most and has the biggest impact on the real economy and, by extension, the everyday Ghanaian? Well, if you talk about excitement, I mean, uh, that would be difficult. But if, if you talk to me about what will have the biggest economic impact, then I think it's the new investment opportunity that the Bank of Ghana has actually made available to investors, which is the gold coin. And there's a reason why I say so. Uh, we are current, Ghana is currently under an IMF program. And because of the debt restructuring that the country did, uh, investment, uh, you know, spaces like the bonds markets, the local bonds market and even the international capital market has all been close to Ghana. So it is becoming difficult to get any form of liquidity to help with government in its budgetary allocations and expenditure. And so this new um, initiative, which didn't start uh, this year, has is, is been there. The Bank of Ghana has been piloting this for a while now and introducing this. They say that it will be a new form of investment opportunity. Uh, for those who want to invest in the economy and uh, an opportunity for the government to also get some liquidity in t for its expenditure, uh, you know, maybe for the last quarter of this year and for the ensuing years as well. Well, let's stay a bit on the launched uh, gold coin. What more do we need to know about it and the impact this will have on the economy and investing public? I know you have your reservations about other things, you know, Ghana being on an IMF program and how it's stifling uh, the country of liquidity and all of that. But let's just stay on this a bit. Well, I mean, the gold coin is, is for, for the government is, is good. It's a good opportunity because uh, when they introduce it, one key reason why they introduce this form of investment has to do with the fact that uh, investors in Ghana, even ordinary Ghanaians, are now buying and hoarding dollars as a form of uh, investment to store value. And they believe that with the introduction of this new gold coin, you can buy it and instead of you know looking at uh, buying dollars for as an, as as a way of investing, uh, when you buy the gold or the the gold coin, you can get the same sort of out, outcome. So for the Bank of Ghana, it is a way of raising capital to help governments with its expenditure, and then they believe that it's a good opportunity for investors, uh, and and also an opportunity for the government to control or to help reduce the current exchange rate. A volatility that the city has lost more than 20% of its value against the dollar because of the high demand, not just for imports, but also people are demanding the dollar as a store of value and they are hoarding it. And they believe that with the introduction of this new gold coin, uh, investors' attention will shift towards that and that will give the city some sort of respite. Well, Isaac, do you see that happening? Do you think investors are actually going to jump on it or do you see risks? Well, it's, it's a, it's a two-way affair. It depends on how what returns the invest, investors are going to get. If I buy a good coin, am I going to buy it in cities? Would the returns be in cities, uh, which continuously loses its value? That's a big question that we all haven't had answers. Or is the government of Ghana going to pay me back in dollars? Uh, because if you look at the gold for oil deal that the government even did, that program was good in terms of helping to stabilize Oil, oil price or fuel prices, but it did a lot of harm to the exchange rate because you had people exchanging their gold uh, for, for, for CDs. And at the, in the long run, you, you end up, these same people will use the CDs that they have in their hands to go and chase after the fewer dollars that were available in the system. So it depends on how governments will roll this out and the kind of investment that uh, investors will get, whether it will be in CDs 
which continuously loses its value or to be. I, I think just Even before we move be away from that, just before we move away from mm -hmm. that, what will be your advice for mitigating against this risk that you just talked about? In less than 30 seconds. Can I, can I come again? Okay, I said uh, just before we move away from that, what will be your advice to the government to mitigate the risk you just highlighted right now? I mean, they can still continue with the implementation of the gold coin, but it has to, they have to really improve the economic fundamentals and make the, the exchange rate situation stable. That's the only way that investors will go for this coin. If the city continues to lose its value, it will be difficult. And so the government or the Bank of Ghana, which they said about two days ago that they have what it takes to, to make the city stable, that's the only way that, I mean, I feel that investors uh, will go for the coin. And so stabilizing... Uh, the exchange rates will, it will be a okay. key determinant on how people will purchase this new coin. Well, let's move away from that. Ghana's gross reserves hit 3.4 months of import cover, and then trade surplus also surged to $2.78 billion in August 2024. How significant is this? Not really significant. I see it as a paper growth. This is the reason. Uh, if you look at the export side, that is bringing in a lot and giving us that sort of surplus. Cocoa was more than $7 billion worth of export, but if you look at the amount that goes into the pockets or the revenue kitty of government, that's less than 13% or 15%. And so essentially, you have a chunk of the money, you know, being sent out of this country. It goes onto the books. It looks very big and it looks very big and good for the, for the, uh, the balance. But when you do the real math in terms of what government will get, it's really, really less. What stays in this country is also really less. Not to just talk about gold, but if you look at it on the oil side, where government gets between 13 to 15 percent of whatever that is exported every year, the revenue or the amount of um, money that stays in this country is also very low. So on the on the facial value, it looks really, really good, but I see it as a paper growth. It doesn't really have any form of significance because you have key, you know, exchange rate earners that. We, we are able to, Ghana is able to get significant monies, but a lot is taken out of the country and just at less, is, less stays in, in, in Ghana at the moment. Well, I mean, notably, we could see that good exports rose by 62.2% to $7.27 billion, and then crude oil exports went up by 16.7% to $2.77 billion. Dollars And then, uh, you know, I mean, you might just want to ask maybe some West African countries may need to come take lessons about how Ghana was able to increase that. I mean, to have that increase or that improvement. And apart from that, your oil import bill is significantly lower than, you know, non-oil import. So talk to us. Don't you think this has some form of significance? Yeah, I mean, we benefited from the global rallying of the gold prices, just like the way cocoa prices went up. That was the same way that uh, this year we've had relatively, you know, good prices for gold, and that's why Ghana was able to export that. Uh, that was able to get that uh, magnitude of revenue. In terms of oil, it's not been the same because we've seen how uh, the global Brent crude prices and other, you know, components have been been on the lower side compared to, you know, some of the commodities like gold and, and cocoa. So that's the reason why Ghana was was really able to to to. Uh, take advantage of the rallying prices in the global space. Unlike Coco, where we are done forward sales, and so the amount that came in was not as expected, but gold were able to take advantage of that market. Right. Now, Ghana has experienced declining headline inflation for five consecutive months by 5.4 percentage points. And also talking about core inflation, that also sort of declined sharply over the comparative period by 6.9 percentage points. This is in contrast to Nigeria, where headline inflation has only declined for two consecutive months, while core inflation has remained elevated. Do you see any upside risks in the mid to long term? Well, I mean, once inflation starts to come down, investors or even, um, you know, people who invest in the economy and businesses will expect that um, the, the borrowing costs will actually reduce. I mean, we've seen the Bank of Ghana cut the rates from 29 to 27. That's one of the positive, you know, impact that this has actually had. But in terms of the real impact on people's pockets, it's still yet to be felt. I mean, you talk about Nigeria, you should know that, I mean, Ghana's crisis started before Nigeria. So it's taken us some significant time for us to gradually heal and i hope that nigeria will get there as well but the figures are reducing and that is actually influencing the reason why the bank of ghana has recently cut the interest but in terms of real impacts on the dining table is yet to be felt 
So what should be done so that this can translate, you know, from um, figures to reality? I mean, it's, there's a big gap. I mean, the, if you look at West African countries and the structure of their economies, it's usually difficult for, you know, very important figures like uh, GDP and inflation to, when they are going up, everybody will feel it, but when they are coming down, it's so difficult. I mean, they always say prices are sticky. Yeah, is it upwards or downwards? Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's always difficult because of the structure of, of the West African economies and most of the the, the developing economy. So it will be difficult for, for any Ghanaian to have such an impact like what we are all expecting. It will take some time. I feel that we'll get some respite possibly in the second quarter of next year. The reason why I say so is that uh, some of the uh, inflows that Bank of Ghana was actually expecting in the fourth quarter have all been reduced. And the biggest concern has to do with the exchange rate going into the last quarter of the year. Demand is going to increase. How is government, a Bank of Ghana going to control this and handle this so that we don't see inflation uh, going over the roof again? We've already seen producer price index going up, and that's a clear indication that if Bank of Ghana loses their grip, we may have to see inflation going up again. And we hope that does not happen. Thank you so much, Isaac AJ, Analyst as Intelligence, for your thoughts on the show today. Pleasure to be here.